Hi everyone, welcome back to H Valley Tools. This is our showroom shop, and today we're going to talk about our crosscut sled. And we designed this a few years back, and when our owner talked to us about a new product, we had a wish list that was 100 miles long. I even wanted it to make pasta. So after the first couple of designs came through, I was really pleased with the outcome. No sled is perfect, but boy, this is really fun to use. The most important thing for us was stability, which meant that it was beefy and solid, and that it was safe. Most times when you have a crosscut sled, they were basically a piece of plywood, a bolster, a bolster, a handle, you cut through it, and that was it, you're done. We didn't want you to cut through the back of the sled for safety reasons. That requires a safety box. Everyone forgets it, they nick their fingers, and we didn't want that. That's why our rear bolster is the handle, and there's an accessory fence in the front that lets you see what you're doing and know where to stop. The other thing was that we wanted this to be beefy and solid. So the material is one inch HDF. What does that mean? It's heavy. So it is really solid and stable. It allows you to pull the sled all the way back start your piece and you can cut through this block that's totally okay and then you do your cut and you're done nice and steady a smooth action but not flowing the reason for that is we have our miter bar here and i really like this bar because it's steel it's really thick and heavy and there's four spring-loaded ball bearings on the underside what that allows you to do is it drops into your slot and then automatically adjusts to the width of your T-slot or your U-slot. There's always some play in those and these really take up that play. So then all we're going to do is bring it over, drop it down, and you slide it over until you find it. And that's it. The other thing that we wanted is we wanted it to be universal for most table saws. Every table saw has a little bit of variability from the blade to the track. So how do you do that? Well, we have inserts. And the inserts really play a big role in the whole design. What this allows you to do is you can position your, your inserts to where your blade is, but also what if you're using a different blade? What if you're using a dado blade? What if you're using an angle blade? Or a different kerf? These things are really slick. Now, the factory cuts these perfect, and I really mean perfect. They are so perfect, they're so tight, sometimes they get stuck, and it's not a big deal. What we do is we use a little beeswax on the exposed HDF and on the underside of the insert. Works great. They're like butter. And then the trick that I've always felt is that you just move them uniformly. And then you loosen your little screws here and you move them uniformly. Bam. And then you bring your blade up. And again, we have to raise the blade to clear the gullets. So there's my piece. I'm not there yet. My one gullet's not clear. Okay, that's about right. Okay, so now we have a good position for our blade, and now we want to adjust the inserts. So now we're just going to bring them over to the blades, and that's tight to the blade. Well, that's going to nick it. All, all we do then is just back it up a hair, literally, so that there's about a sixteenth of an inch. It doesn't have to be perfect, and then you just snug them down. And now you've got a zero clearance insert for your blade. If you happen to damage these or nick them, don't worry. We have replacements for them all the time. No big deal. The other factor that was kind of slick on this was the fence. The fence keeps you in front of your work and you can see what's going on. The other thing that you can do is we can angle it. So it's got an adjustment pin here and then we can just angle it to where we want. The angle gauge is pretty accurate. But regardless of that, I always double check my angles. It's just good woodworking. And it allows you to position where you want and make your cuts. Pretty cool. The other thing too you can do if you need to, you can bring your fence forward. So if you did need to be further ahead on your, on your saw, no problem. I kind of like it back, but that's all right. 
The other thing that you have to do with this is there's accessory clamps that you can use in these quarter 20 tracks. Now, the way that this is designed, we didn't want you to have to clamp everything down, but sometimes you got a weird piece of wood and you have to. So you can use one of our wing clamps or you can use one of our, bar, our sliding bar clamps. And the item numbers will be on the video. And these are kind of slick. You just slide them in and clamp down your wood. If you find that the piece of wood is in a weird spot, you can use one of the long reach wing clamps. And these guys just slide in. You position it where you want. You spin it down. Ta-da. Done. It has a stop with it that's kind of nice. It's pretty thick and beefy and it gets out of the way. And when you're doing repetitive cuts, it's nice to be able to have this thing set up. You tighten it down, you line it up, you make your cut, then you slide and make your cut. Pretty cool. So that's the basic operation of it for a table saw. But the reason why we called it a multi-form was I wanted to be able to use this on a router table. And that's where it's really cool. So on a router table, geez louise, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with angles and different profiles and round nose bits and flutes and all that kind of stuff. And that's why we wanted this to be able to go over to a router table, and we're going to go over there in a second, and show you how to use it. The most important thing is that it's yours. If you felt like, hey, I want to put something here, I want to adjust this or modify it, go ahead. I felt like too many times these crosscut sleds get too complicated, they're hard to use, and we wanted you to have fun with yours. Make it yours. Enjoy it. So right now, we're going to break this down and hop over to the router table. Okay, so now I'm at our router table in our shop, and I've removed the fence because that gets in the way, and our power lift arm that we have here gets in the way. So now I'm going to go over to our saw, grab our multi-form, and put it on here. The trick is always finding the slot. Okay, so now we're set up with our multi-form sled on our router table. It's pretty wicked. Um, what this is going to let me do is, in this example, I've got a piece of hardwood and I want to cut a cross dado in it for an undersized plywood. So how do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is just loosen up my inserts and just back them off gently. And then I'm going to bring my bit up. Now, let me get that. And this is where having a power lift is absolutely glorious. Okay, now we're going to tighten these inserts up to our cutter. So now I'm just going to slide these over. Okay, and make sure we've got clearance and then just snug it down. And I'm going to adjust this side. So I'm going to come around here so I can get it both on the same side. And then adjust it over. Perfect. Yay. Okay. So now, now I've got the ability. I'm going to move that. So now I can actually slide my piece right through. So if I had to do a shelf dado, I can literally put the piece of oak here, set it up, and then cut it right through. Very cool. The nice thing is that you can use this for a lot of different bits and profiles. You could create flutes, any kind of plunge profile. It just works great. And I've used this for some joinery bits that are really difficult to do on a router table. And it works really well. That's where having the fixturing of the clamps really makes an advantage. Like a finger joint is just a nightmare to cut on a router table. It's a dream on this. You just cut the end, cut the other end, done. It's got a lot of applications. The cool thing also is that, let's say you wanted to do a step ladder type of shelf. All you have to do, slide it to the angle you want, cut it. And now you have a step ladder dado. It's really neat, a lot of fun. But that's why it's got a weird name like multi-form, which really stands for multi-format. And we're always improving our products. This is version one. There are some other things we want to do down the road. We're still working on it. And any feedback or questions, please ask. Give us a call. 
And if you have any time, stop by the H Valley Tools showroom in Southampton, PA. Love to see you. It's a fun time, fun place to visit. Have a great day, and thank you for watching the video. Perfect.